Alright ladies and gentlemen, Harlequin here and I've got another Dawn of War 2 Retribution game for you all. Uh, just before we start, like I said in previous replays, I know we have a lot of new people coming to my channel and Retribution is becoming very popular. So if you're new here, welcome, thanks for watching these videos. Uh, please do feel free to subscribe if you do enjoy my casts. Otherwise, drop by uh, the official discussion thread up on GameReplays.org if you want to share some thoughts on these games, what I could do to improve, any suggestions and whatnot. Uh, that link is always going to be up on the left hand side of my channel or in the description of this video. Otherwise, you can always send in replay submissions to harlequincasts at gmail.com. Again, that's up on my channel. Anyhow, here we are today on Green Tooth Gorge, and I have a really cool uh, custom one versus one game. So let's go ahead and take a look around the map right now. Green Tooth Gorge, I have already looked at sort of in detail, but we've got this kind of jungly kind of map going on here. Uh, the uh, the victory points are going to be split diagonally between the uh, the two starting locations, and otherwise we just have sort of a normal distribution of requisition points, power, and that sort of thing. Anyhow, this is a good sized game, so we'll go ahead and get this started. In the northern position, we have playing as the Farseer, and I gotta say, I love this chick. Uh, playing as the Farseer, we have Tiger as our Eldar commander. Uh, he's gonna be the red player, and on the southern side of the map, we have Tex Anius playing as, what the hell? As a force commander for the Space Marines. Now, I know Tex Anius. Uh, he usually plays as Orc. He's a fantastic Orc. In fact, uh, if any of you missed my uh, pre-release Retribution uh, event that I did with Relic, uh, he was one of the top players in that. So uh, I do know this guy a little bit. And uh, as you can see, this is a custom game and all of the observers are just kind of chit-chatting away here. Uh, but it looks like he opened up with a squad of tactical marines, whereas Tiger opened up with a squad of Howling Banshees. Howling Banshees just kind of capping around. And uh, I do believe this is a good long game here. So we'll let this progress naturally here. Uh, this is my only one uh, complaint here about the replay system. Oh, there, there are plenty of things that could be improved, but I do wish that observers Observer chat uh, would only stay amongst observers, and if you were, say, for instance, a referee, it wouldn't show for referees. Or if you were just observing the game like I am now, you wouldn't have to be uh, berated by it. Maybe even count me as a referee. Who knows? Anyhow, so Tactical Marines just having a little bit of a skirmish right now with the Farce here on the southern side of the map. Uh, nothing too important there. Over here on the right, Guardian Squad capping a requ requisition point. Uh, and more towards the center, we do have this Scout Squad moving on out. So uh, Tex Anius uh, has yet to do anything else with his money. Uh, we do see that uh, it looks like Tiger has already set up a uh, power node and dropped two power generators down. Uh, no sign of a power node yet for Tex Anius, so I'm kind of curious what he's doing. Taking a look around, you can see he's got about 470 bucks, so perhaps perhaps he's considering saving up for a second tactical marine squad. Uh, that's an interesting choice if that's what he's doing there. You can see that this force commander uh, bumping heads a little bit. The Howling Banshees, and yes, we do have a second tactical marine squad, so uh, I, I for one am intrigued at seeing what the hell uh, Tex Texanius is up to right now. Oh, and there he goes right now. Uh, smacking away <laughs> at that little Howling Banshee. Uh, but just, in other words, he's just going to have to get on out of here, though. This is way too much melee uh, for this poor Force Commander to deal with. Uh, you can see that these Howling Banshees are just kind of charging on in. They're furious. They want <laughs> they want a piece of that Force Commander, but he's going to hang out in his guard tower for the time being here. Uh, but, you know, I know that the Force Commander is not a popular pick. Oh, I don't know. It, it's, it's debatable, but amongst uh, Space Marine players. Uh, but certainly going dual tactical Marine squads is kind of a slow opening uh, because, you know, they're just kind of a slow unit. They're really good ranged units, but uh, only having two squads in addition to your scout who should be running around capping. It's kind of tricky. We have a little bit of Mortal Kombat going on right now here between the Farce here uh, and the Force Commander. Uh, looks like Force Commander is upgrading his Artificer armor, which will give him increased hit points and hit point regeneration. Uh, just kind of a healthy sort of armor there. And oh, look at that. It looks like our Farce here does have the Ghost Helm upgrade right now. Uh, basically gives the Mind War ability, which uh, you know allows her to do some psychic damage and suppress. Uh, Force Commander just barely getting on out of there, so uh, I think it was pretty lucky that he got that Artificer Armor up in time. Anyhow, over here on the left, you can see that we do have the Howling Banshees. Uh, they've taken a single casualty, but they're still capping strong. And uh, more towards the center here, we do have the Tactical Marines ooh, laying into this poor little Farce here as she's running away. Uh, you can see doing a lot of damage there. Um, uh, but again, with just these three units out on the field, uh, Texanius is going to have a tricky time. Uh, hopefully, if he can get good positioning, like right now, uh, he will just tear into these Guardians right now. So uh, he's got good positioning, shooting them all in the back while they're trying to take care of that power node. Uh, good stuff there. And over here on the left, it looks like the scouts were able to kind of pick off a little bit of these Howling Banshees. 
Howling Banshees now charging in and screaming. They have been upgraded to have Aspect of the Banshee and just in time to retreat, realizing that they've uh, <laughs> they've been knocked down to two models and are now under uh, overlapping fire here from these double tactical marine squads. So uh, let's take a look down here. I just heard some power generators drop. Yes, we already had one up right now for Texanius, two more on the way. Uh, meanwhile, a full three uh, going on up here for Tiger. So Tiger, by the way, just recently got this Shuriken Cannon weapons team out right there. Uh, that's definitely a good move and another reason why it's going to be kind of tricky to get anything done with these tactical marines because they are uh, so likely to get suppressed once this cannon gets set up. Uh, you can see that the Farseers just kind of hacking and slashing away over here and uh, yes they are but oh we have a beautiful looking flank coming right now out of the Force Commander. Force Commander by the way also upgraded to an Iron Halo and you can see that activated right now and unfortunately you can see his mana is just draining away like crazy uh, as he is taking a lot of damage here from these Howling Banshees. Uh, looks like the Howling Banshees are just kind of piling in on him. Uh, he did some pretty reasonable damage. You can see, bam, just laying in with those special attacks. Uh, but unfortunately, he's going to have to get out of there. Good good timing, too. That Farseer was just about to knock him back. And uh, for the time being, it looks like these Tactical Marines are in a little bit of trouble here, uh, potentially getting swarmed uh, by a bunch of Howling Banshees right now. Howling Banshees uh, letting loose that Banshee scream there, uh, but doesn't really matter. They are all retreating on out of there. So looking back towards the middle, you can see that the Farseer has uh, taken control of the center. Uh, she also has the Armor of Fortune ability as well, uh, which basically she can uh, be used to uh, reduce the incoming damage and that sort of thing. Uh, good, tough upgrade there for her. Uh, and up here in the northern side, you can see that Texanius' scout squad is constantly waging this passive-aggressive war, as I like to call it. Just, you know, always be capping the ABCs of Dawn of War or Coho or whatever game you want, uh, where you have lots of uh, strategic points to capture. Always be capturing something at all points in the game, and uh, that's pretty much the job of these scouts, or, or at the very least to defend the points that they have captured. Uh, so Force Commander and Tactical Marines now moving on out. And uh, for the time being, uh, no real change in anybody's army, but you can see, oh, it looks like the Shuriken Cannon team gets set up just in time. And this is, of course, uh, the power of having that early Shuriken Cannon team. You can see uh, just laying into this squad right here. Uh, these Tactical Marines just going to be, you know, they're just going to have to crawl in. They're taking a little bit of damage. Uh, the Force Commander, however, activating his Iron Halo uh, to make sure he reduces the amount of damage coming in there. So uh, that was kind of a kind of a little bit of a setback there. Uh, meanwhile, it uh, looks like the Guardian squad moving on in just to provide a little bit of extra support for the Shuriken team. Uh, and it looks like both uh, players went ahead and upgraded their, uh, we got a level 2 Stronghold and a level 2 uh, Webway Gate Assembly coming here. So um, both players just moving right on up to Tier 2. And so I think that's going to be the end sort of of the Tier 1 fights for the time being here. So let's take a look around now on the right-hand side. We can see that this Farseer just continuing to always be capping here in the back. Uh, Power Node here has been upgraded for Texanius just to kind of uh, give a little bit more there. Uh, but pretty much everybody's kind of set in their ways here. You can see it uh, looks like Tiger finally moving on out. And uh, putting a little bit of pressure down here on this southern victory point with these Howling Banshees. Um, we do have a tactical marine in, uh, a tactical marine squad in this guard tower. That's pretty sweet. You can see even getting a little, uh, getting a single model kill over there in that guardian squad. Uh, that's a good defensive position, but unfortunately these Howling Banshees are just a little bit too far south for them to hit. Uh, they went ahead, decapped this victory point, and uh, whoop, they jump right back in that building there. So still pistol fire, but no melee going on there for the time being. Uh, looks like this tactical marine squad is going to be getting upgraded with a sergeant as soon as tier two is done. And uh, ooh, same for this one as well. So uh, double sergeants coming out there. And on the right-hand side, oh, once again, epic combat going on between this poor Force Commander and this Farseer. Uh, the Farseer, of course, with her uh, big beefy armor upgrade and the Ghost Helm, uh, really is going to be able to just kind of uh, make mincemeat out of this Force Commander if he doesn't have a good setup there. So it uh, looks like he's going to have to get on out of there, especially with that Shirk and Weapons Cannon uh, moving on in. Uh, more towards the center, we do have this slightly wounded scout squad capping the center. And uh, just to take a quick look at the victory points, it is 2-1 to one right now, about to be 1-1, to one, uh, with 312 points for Tex Anius and 456 for uh, Tiger there. So uh, he is definitely ahead. Uh, Tiger's definitely ahead there, and we do have the Farseer moving on out. So once again, uh, Force Commander just kind of stalling away here, but you can see that this uh, Farseer really doesn't have anything to be worried about. She's charging on in, just kind of wrecking away at his shields right now. She is being upgraded for the Singing Spear, that giant Power Spear ability, and uh, it looks like the Shuriken Weapons Team uh, getting set up just in time to suppress the heck out of him. 
Uh, he's going to have to retreat like crazy. Oh, and is he going to go down? Yes, the Force Commander uh, gets wrecked, and the Farseer's Singing Spear is upgraded here. Uh, meanwhile, we have an all-out retreat coming through the middle. Looks like the Tackle Marines getting the heck on out of there. Uh, but the Guardians are uh, kind of underestimating uh, their flank there. And what do we have here? It looks like a very fast Devastator Plasma Cannon squad is out in the field right now. So I love the sound of that gun when it goes off. Uh, you can see the Singing Spear doing a little bit more damage up here. Uh, just kind of uh, hassling away with these guys. And that suppression right there, I believe, was the Ghost Helm ability being used once again. Boom! Look at that. So we do have this Devastator Plasma Cannon uh, out there right now. But she doesn't care. Oh! the Farseer is running in for the kill. She just wants some stabby stab action going in here right now, uh, poking away at these Devastators. Uh, I love that chick with that fleet of foot ability just charging on in. Look at that. Uh, but unfortunately now I think she's going to be taking a little bit too much damage uh, from this tactical marine squad with their sergeant and uh, she should get out of there. Uh, she's turning around doing a little bit of Oh, never mind. Lest I underestimate her further, she gets a nice little special attack there, knocking back all of those fine gentlemen in their fancy looking uh, blue and white armor. 